AJ. Okay. So we're all set and recording. Okay. Excellent. You all hear me? Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the SUNY National Distance Learning Week webinar series. National Distance Learning Week is celebrated annually to generate greater awareness and appreciation for distance learning while recognizing leaders and best practices in the field. Please take a moment and let us know where you are tuning in from on the chat. Mics are muted during the presentation, but we will open them for questions or comments at the end if time permits. You can also type any question in the chat for our speaker. My name is AJ Davidson. I am a help desk analyst at Open SUNY. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, I would like to welcome you to the showcase webinar as part of National Distance Learning Week. Uh, if you could um, click the slide. Thank you. All right, so today we are pleased to host Adele Merlino from SUNY Maritime College who will be sharing about the importance of giving consideration to the user experience and user interface in, on, in online course design. Adele Merlino is an educational technologist at the Center for Teaching Excellence at SUNY Maritime College where she works with faculty to create online courses that meet quality matters standards and best practices. Prior to that, she was an instructional designer and technologist for four years at the Center for Online Learning at Hudson Community College in Jersey City, New Jersey, where she designed online courses. She has also been an adjunct professor for the past eight years. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, thank you for joining us today and sharing what you know. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, AJ. Um, so when designing online courses, um, one of the things that I found is important is looking at the user's experience and how the interface becomes uh, an intuitive way of navigating the course. Um, we all know online is growing and from 2017, Cruz, Bordenada and uh, Wilkinson say that 28% of undergrads will be taking one online course in their academic career. And I'm pretty sure at this point, it's much higher than that. Um, we all know online degree programs are growing, but the problem with online is that they're typically designed by instructors who are not effectively and intentionally creating um, courses that meet the needs of online learners. Um, they're trying to mirror the traditional face-to-face -face course. Um, another problem is um, communications and not providing the immediate attention for um, successful and effective interactions. So what happens is learners um, fall into this black hole and that's something that we need to try to avoid. Um, of course, Quality Matters recommends that we try to uh, incorporate social presence, interactions, and well-structured, navigable content. And that's, I guess, what I'm gonna be discussing. I think the keys to successful learning outcomes is establishing social presence, uh, student-teacher and student-student um, interactions, and eliminating those uh, feelings of isolation and creating that communications. Um, one of the theories that I draw from is the, the media richness theory of communications, which states the highest form of communications naturally is face to face. And then we delve into video, audio, text, and images, even interactive media is a part of that. Um, of course, you're not going to have face to face interactions, but you can mimic it in some way by implementing presence through Zoom. Um, Zoom is a great tool. I think it's one of the best tools out there. If you haven't used it, you should try it. We are implementing it in our online courses. Professors are using it for student office hours, uh, group projects, presentations, and they're even recording lectures. Um, so I highly recommend that. Another key to successful learning outcomes is 
rethinking how we think about online design. Yeah, there's the Addy model, but what does that all mean? This is kind of an out of the box type of thinking. Your online course is no different than a website and implementing that user experience is important for the learner. Um, so by uh, incorporating those type of design principles, we are incorporating usability, navigability, visual design, um, interactive design, and having our learners engaged with the content. Um, the structure, does it make sense? Is it, does it flow? And wireframing, that is the biggest thing that I've incorporated here at Maritime. Um, and I'll get into that right now um, in a few minutes. So, of course, um, making sure that fonts are easy to read, they're sans serif, um, ADA compliant, they're black, you know, professors here were using red, purple, green, and that had to stop. Um, make sure that um, content was structured and blocked out properly. The information wasn't overstated, Informa you know, directives were stated clearly that we're using, using visual cues and graphics to, you know, jazz up the course and keeping it simple and concise yet informative. So here's an example of a course that existed but no longer exists. Um, and you can see how there's a lot of information cluttered all over. It's visually not appealing. It's visually difficult to look at. Um, the titling is really long and I've taken it and uh, put it in a different format. I've created a development shell and now this is what the students are seeing. I've streamlined the menu and I've created um, module folders and an Ask the Professor forum. And inside um, the, the folders, you'll see this is what it was, it used to be. And now this is how it is now. So the first page on top is the learning activities page, which states the title of the module. And then there's a simple overview with the learning objectives that align to the assignments or the uh, assessments. And there's a graph. In every course, in every module, there's a graph. I implemented that through uh, designing it through uh, HTML coding. And now professors are putting in, you know, there's a lecture material, there's reading chapters, this and that, there's assignments to do, there's discussions, and then reminders of any projects or any other content assessments that may be coming down the pipe in the course. And within each um, folder, there's lectures, whether it's a video or videos or even um, PDF forms of, of lectures. Um, module readings that gets more specific and then the uh, links to the discussion forums and assignments. This is looking into uh, the lecture folder and you'll see, you know, this professor is having a Zoom meeting and um, He's sending it out via the announcements page, along with uh, the PDFs that he wants his students to go through. And this is the virtual office hours with the Zoom link. Again, it's the way to implement presence. The professor has an actual face and a voice. And this is the readings folder with even the library resources. And this is some of the feedback that we've gotten 
straight out of the students in um, eval kit evaluations. And, you know, they find it very organized and easy to find. All quizzes, quizzes and exams, the final exam are posted along with their due dates, very important. Good communications with students. Um, one student said the strength of the course were the videos and the feedback on the homework. Feedback is extremely important. And they all felt videos were uh, very helpful. In that particular course, the learning outcomes totally changed. It went from D's and F's and students literally dropping out of this course to this professor getting some A's and B's and not losing any students. So we're retaining students better and I'm getting that from professors across the board. Um, so it's important that um, presence is there and the professor chimes in and is giving some face time to these students. Um, again, you know, um, referring back to uh, virtual or online students learn to engage in a real world um, communications practices, which are very much employed by workers and scholars everywhere. So we need to recognize that you know, there's a value to online education that is employable. That's a skill that um, they're learning the technology and they're learning how to navigate it. And it's important for their, um, you know, future uh, practices. Um, neuroscience supports the constructive uh, point of view learning is built upon through experience and prior learning. The brain is not a recording device, but actively constructs reality. And teaching online can be disorienting for most faculty, and that's understandable. Um, but uh, they're no longer the sage on the stage, but more a facilitator. I think that most instructors need to realize that. And uh, Paolo Ferrer, who I think was, you know, amazing. He's one of my favorite educators who inf infamously called conventional classroom instruction, the banking concept of education where instructors are depositing information. And we need to stray away from that. That's something that we need to help them learn by constructing their learning and online is a great way of doing that. And we, that we need to rethink how we design our courses. Any questions? I kind of breezed through that real fast. I hope it wasn't too fast. Adele, this is Erin. One of the things that um, I find sometimes in working with instructional designers is that they will say, um, you know, when working with faculty, sometimes there's a challenge about approaching them to redo something that they invested so much time into, right? So they, they created their courses and for whatever reason, they, they like the way they structured it. They think that it's good. What, just what advice do you have with working with faculty and, and how to kind of get them on board to do these types of um, really good suggestions that you gave us? Sometimes they're a little reticent to, you know, to change their courses. Absolutely, Erin. I mean, I see it here a lot, more than I've ever seen it in any other institution. Um, it's a tough balancing act. I mean, I'll tell them, try it, try it. Here's my development shell. I'll, I'll create one for your course and I'll help you, you know. Um, I do offer my assistance always. Um, one of the things that I find tough is having them really understand aligning their learning objectives with their assessment. I think I'm getting there. They're, Finding that once they do try it, and I did have a professor who's totally technology um, uh, challenged, and I helped him with it. I helped him create that graphic. Um, and he came back to me and was like, 
I can't believe how great this is working. So once they start, one starts trying it, the whole thing kind of spreads like wildfire throughout their department and they're all kind of want to try it. So sometimes it's about time, getting them to come in and actually, uh, you know, taking the time to do it. But um, we're doing it slowly and we're rolling it out. We're working on the um, career or the um, degree programs first. Those are mandated to be to go through the development shell. And then little by little, we're going through um, the one off courses, you know, in undergrad. So yeah, it's a little tough. But my suggestion is just to tell them, you know, try it, and you'll see. And you know, and if they need a help with the um, technology, I'm doing a little hand holding, but um, in the end, it works out. I hope I answered your question. Yep. Um, Adele, this is AJ. I just like to share with you some of the questions that are coming into the chat. Okay. Uh, Maureen Larson would like to know. Did you follow the QM rubric for your design components? Yes. Yes, everything's through the QM. Everything that I stated is another way of thinking QM. So, yes. All right, and I have another question here. Is there a disadvantage to a modular approach? Doesn't it apply that once we are done with that module, we are done? It defies process, it defines iterations, or no? I don't really understand that question. A module runs week to week. Um, there has to be structure in an online course for a student to independently go through it week to week. So if we start on a Sunday and we, uh, or a Monday and we end a Sunday, they know that week I've got to do lecture, I've got assignments, I've got this, I've got that and they go through it. Um, if they're not regimented in their structure, they may lose track of what they're uh, doing. Um, and again, you know, the professors there always as the um, facilitator saying, okay, this week it's module three. And it doesn't have to be called a module, it could be called a unit. You could call it whatever you want. And this is what we call it here at Maritime. I hope I answered your question. Yes, it appears so. Are there any other questions? Oh. Another one from Maureen Larson that just popped up for me. Do you have a regular cycle of course reviews? Yes. Um, so we have two online degree programs. Um, we're going through the first cycle of reviews. And so every uh, semester I'm doing four, at least four reviews. Um, and so after four, after I'm done with the degree program, um, I would be reviewing them again in another three to four years. All right. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions? All right, so I don't see anything else popping up in the chat. Okay. So I will thank you very much, Adele, for sharing with us today. Uh, today's uh, sessions was recorded. You can access all our webinar recordings and resources at the URL on this slide, and I will put this into the chat. Uh, we appreciate your participation today and hope to see you at another distance learning event in the future. Great, thank you.